In this video, I want to talk about recursion or really recursive functions. So what is a recursive function? Well, a recursive function is a function that calls itself. Okay, so let's let's make an example. We'll say define recursive func and this is a uh, function that will recurse and we'll say that it we want it to print we want it to print I am recursive okay but we also want it to call itself so within this method this function the function calls itself so it calls the recursive func function inside of itself okay so this is a recursive function a it's a basic recursive function with no base case i'll explain what a base case is soon and now let's try to call this recursive function right let's see what happens try and guess what's going to happen you'll find out soon right I'm going to run this so you can all see what will happen. Oh, I didn't define the darn thing. I'll just do all of that at once. And you see that it kept calling itself, I am recursive function, I am recursive function, I am recursive. It kept calling itself, and then there was a recursive, maximum recursion depth, exceeding calling a Python object error. Right, I'll call it again. And you see it keeps trying to print out and then it just stops it prints a bunch of itself out and it stops so what's happened here is because this function just prints you know this out this string out and then it calls itself but it has no way of stopping itself from calling itself it just keeps calling itself forever and it will keep printing out this string uh, this is problematic because essentially it'll be stuck on an infinite loop forever because it doesn't have what's called a base case. A base case case is a condition, not a condition, a condition that allows a recursive function to stop calling itself right so essentially we want this recursive function to keep calling itself um, until we tell it to stop or until something makes it stop if you want to get technical there's actually a base case the base case is that it causes a python error but that's not really what we're looking for we we want it to be able to stop itself without it sparking an error essentially right so let's define something with a base case. We'll say string rev, we'll call it. And we'll put in a string. And this is going to be a recursive function that can reverse a string, right? And we'll say that if the length of this string is more than one, then what we'll do is we'll return, oops, not return, right? We'll return this uh, recursive thing plus string one to zero now strings are arrays so i can actually call within this function the whole string itself except for zero so this is one to the end of the array inclusive so we're going to get all the elements of this array called except for zero so except the first part of whatever our string is right we're going to return this recursive function plus we're going to return the first value of the string which is zero because array is that zero and we're going to say else just return string so our else condition is if the length of string is not more than one so it's one or zero essentially we just return the whole string and essentially, because this will keep calling itself 
minus you know the first character of the string indefinitely until there's a string that's not bigger to zero this will be the base case when the string becomes value one right now i'll get more into that in a second just made our little uh, function here now let's call it on a string right and then i'll explain how it works so we're going to call it on pin and what it should actually return is nit n-i-t okay so let's see what happens and it's returned nit so why has it returned that well i could say because this function is really cool and it i'll explain part by part why it why it does that so our first called function is string rev tin and we called it okay so we call string rev tin here okay our our second called function is string rev in and it is called within our first call okay so how is it called within our first call so We'll, we'll we call we say we call this this string here we call this string tin within the string rev function and because this string tin has three characters in it it's actually of length three which is more than one so within this return value it will actually call this function again on itself minus the uh, item zero of the array which is t so it'll actually call this function on in and that's our second called function which is called within our first call string ref tin right our third and last called function is string rev n and it is called within our third call uh, second call Yay. getting them mixed up there so we call this in and because it's of the string is of greater length than one it then tries to return this and the first value of the array which would be i right but it calls this now when these uh, functions when these calls actually make these try to make these returns what happens is they are trying to return all of this right but they can't return the first first character within the string uh, before they call return this they have to return this actual sort of call itself and then they return the letter themselves right now the first call function can't return this until it's returned this it can't return t until it's returned this string this uh sorry yeah this call function and then this call function which is the second function also cannot return um this until it returns the call n string rev n right so when we get to our third call function which is string rev n string rev n returns itself because it's not more than one it's it's only one character of length so it returns itself right so it's then when it's returned here it's actually returned in the second call function so in the second call function this string rev will resolve to n right and then the second call function will return string zero so it'll return n and then it'll return string zero so it'll return i 
it will return i, the first value in the array i n. Okay, so it will return n plus i in the second call function will return this. Okay, that means the second call function will be resolved, and then the first call function tin will resolve this to i n because that's the return value. Uh, that's given from calling string rev for for i n right so it will return n i plus it will return the first value of tin which is t so it'll return n i plus t which is going to be nit all right so let's go over that again the first and second all cannot return string zero or the zero the zero item in the array first item in the array until the string rev string calls are resolved. Okay, once the third call is resolved, it returns n. Okay, this allows the second call's um, string. Sorry, string rev n to resolve, and so the second call returns string rev n. which is n plus the first item in the string um, i n i e i okay so the second call returns n plus i i.e. it returns n i the third call can now the third calls string rev I n returns an i and the string zero of tin returns t. So the third call the the first call sorry it's the first call returns and an i plus p comma i e tin And this is why tin is returned from string rev uh, i.e. nit not tin. This is why nit is reserved from string rev tin. Okay. 
that simple so it goes into itself and it recurses on the uh, the very last call callback and it goes but it works itself backwards once it gets to a base case and then it returns everything collectively okay no that's a bit to get your head around but just just go through this explanation you know have a look at this code here and have a look at this string rev try and make your own you know own calls call your own strings whatever you want and have a look at how it works and think about how that's going to work right but essentially you always need a base case now now that i've got that complicated explanation out of the way i am going to make a simpler uh, a much simpler kind of recursive call so i'm going to say num output and we're going to say a number and we're going to say if num is less than 20 then we're just going to print out Oh, number is more than less than 20. We're going to print out that the final number is less than 20 and has not been printed, right? And we're going to say else print. num now we're actually going to say str of num because we want to print a whole string oops don't know how that happened and we're going to say is our number and is more than 20 or is is 20 or more right and we're going to say, well, actually, I'm going to put a num in there, you know. But, but we'll put that in there. We're going to say, is the final num. Sorry, I know this is above this line here, and it shouldn't really be, but I kind of just want to get the point across. Need a plus sign there. And, yeah, we're also going to say, num output num minus five oh, not um num minus five right so let's just define that there and what this is going to do is if we have a number that's higher than 20 and we use it on the num output so we'll say 36 it's just going to print out this number and then every number consecutive number that's the same as this number minus five and the same as the one before it keeps printing out numbers that are five below the last number until it gets to a number uh, that is below 20 and it's going to print that number and say that it's the final number and it's less than 20 we're not going to say it's not been printed we're just going to say it's less than 20 don't know why i put it that way. right let's try it out so 36 is our number and it's 20 or more 31 is our number and is 20 or more. I'm just going to put a space here to make it a bit better. So 21 is our number and it's 20 or more. And 16 is the final number and is less than 20. Just let me correct that. So we'll run that again just to show you it nice and spicy. 36 is our number and is 20 or more. And it just keeps doing that. And in this case, the base case is a lot simpler. It's just less than 20. Okay. Now. I'm really sorry that I had to show you this really complicated example. Um, if you didn't understand it, you know, just like I said, go over it, look at this example. But it's necessary uh, to understand this if you want to understand recursive calls properly. It's necessary to understand how one call affects the another. And it's not the last call, the last call that matters. It's actually the order in which calls are made and in which things are returned with in calls that matters right when you're making returns to calls so you really want to look at and try to understand this if you didn't if you really can't get your head around it and you think you'll never use recursive that's fine but make sure you use a base case don't make a recursion like this because it'll just print forever and you know have a little look at this mess around make your own recursive number 
because of uh, functions. Now, one thing I do want to say before I end the video is just sort of the use of these recursive values and a little disclaimer. So, recursive recursion isn't really used all that often in programming unless you're doing something very complex or if you're going to be messing around with like I don't know custom data structures or maybe really fiddly data structures and for the most let's say you're using JS or JavaScript should I say or you're using just regular Java you'll probably never use recursion however in Python, most people, you know, most people get into programming in Python or programming in Python because they want to manipulate data, they want to do machine learning and stuff like that. It's it's really for data manipulation more than anything else. You can use it for all sorts of things, but it's commonly used for data manipulation. And at some point with data manipulation, you're probably going to end up using recursion. Note that you can use recursion in most programming languages. You know, it's not a Python strict thing. Um, but there are, you know, there's some genuine uses for recursion, such as sorting binary trees or just looking, searching through binary trees. I'm not going to go into what binary tree is because that's not part of this. But, you know, just be aware that you may never use this, but it's worth understanding uh, its algorithmic complexity, especially if you're going to go into more sort of in-depth data science stuff with Python and that yes it does have some use cases. Anyway all that said I uh, I hope you enjoyed all of this essentially. Thank you.